What's up, guys? Welcome back to Stunt News. I'm Killer Cam. Uh, I'm just super happy to be in front of the green screen again. Feels really good. Um, if you guys don't know, Las Vegas is starting to open up a little bit. There's a couple bars open and stuff like that. So it really feels good to hopefully move forward and get back to kind of being normal, you know? So we have a dope interview with Jason Britton. Um, for those that don't know, it's about 30 minutes long. So what I did was cut it in half and I made two part segment, but don't worry, I'm not gonna delay on the, uh, the two part type thing. I'm gonna do my best to get them both uploaded within a week. So stay tuned with that. So let's get into some uh, sponsors. So Envy Legal still, we still have this brand new GoPro, GoPro 8 with the whole startup package. We're 300 subscribers away. That's super dope. Um, this thing's still been sitting on my shelf. I'm pretty sure we could hit that within a month. So make sure you like, subscribe, share this video. It's all knowledge. It's all free game for everybody. I've also been taking these CBD pills from Merkin 22. Awesome. They also have animal uh, CBD treats for them as well. It's super dope. So let's go ahead and get into the interview. It's super dope that Jason Britton gave us the opportunity to come by and check out his shop at uh, No Limit Motorsports. Whether you're you like the guy, don't like the guy, never met him. Um, you have to respect what he has done and where he's, what he's accomplished within the sport bikes. He's been riding for a really long time and really set the bar high. And I, I'm sure like no matter what kind of rider you are, it would be sick to have a factory sponsor like that or you know, be under Icon or Monster or whoever the case may be, whatever goals you have. But Jason Britton has really put in his work and years and blood, sweat, and tears to get where he's at. So. Let's go ahead and give you part one of two, Behind the Helmet with Jason Britton. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, please. Like I said, we're trying to push forward. Don't forget to purchase all your merchandise at realstuntnews.com. We keep it updated all the time so you know what we have in stock, what we don't have in stock. A lot of you guys are asking for sticker packs, so we finally put sticker packs online. Just hit our website right there, and you're more than welcome to purchase. I do ship almost daily. I for sure ship every single Monday, no matter what. So, you know, just give me some time. But, you know, like I said, we're going to go ahead and get in this interview. And I appreciate all your guys' support. Stay blessed. Five, so what's up guys, Killer Cam back here with Stunt News and we are here today with the legend Jason Britton. Jason, we appreciate you for coming on here, my guy. No worries, my man. And not so much legend, maybe just the oldest stunt rider in the game <laughs> in the U.S. Let's just call it that. What do you think is the longest tra uh, travel time that you've taken on your journey? Like, what's the furthest you've gone driving-wise? Driving-wise, I would say coast to coast. coast, -to -coast. Uh, I've actually been way up in Victoria, way up by Canada, and driven to Florida. So, I mean, you're talking almost 6,000 miles from one end Wrong. to the other, yeah, and uh, that's a long. I mean, you you guys know yeah. we all we all in the stunt game. We all know that driving, uh, you have the bait above your head to chase, <laughs> right? Dude. Going to ride in a session, going to a show, going to ride with friends, whatever it is, that's the bait that gets you there. Definitely. Like I literally drove by myself to Stunt Wars in 2010. <laughs> To mainly go ride with friends, Everybody and I collected else. some hardware, but it was mainly to go ride with friends, and I right. did it in 42 hours from, or 41 hours from California to Florida, straight through, gas stops only. Savage. Yeah. What was the longest you've been on the road straight? Uh, there had been a time when we were shooting Superbike Stealth Rider era. Stealth Riders, you know. <laughs> that I'd been gone for four months. Jeez. Four months of travel, stop, shoot oh shoot we got a show in between here let's go do the show go back and i made okay so we won't say 
being on the road like away from home because I did at that time ride with Eric Honeshell and Tony Carbajal and we would uh, slumber at Eric's house and, and call that home. Right. So we had a home base in Oklahoma City and it was very much like home but it was a lot hotter Definitely. or a lot colder or a lot more hail or whatever going on but completely not california but it wasn't california and it wasn't home and i was away from the family and it it sucks yeah. no matter what Definitely. over time yeah no matter how how or where you live being a stunt rider being on the road is awesome but there's never a feeling like when you get home no Definitely. place like home yeah uh, what got you into stunt riding so i guess as a kid i rode motocross but what got me into stunt riding was the shock that my friends that were older than me had when they had street bikes and I was 12 years old, 13 years old, riding a, a, little, uh, a little 85. You know, these guys were riding sport bikes and they saw me wheeling my dirt bikes down the street and that's how they, I was known as a, the neighborhood hooligan. Right. And uh, one of my buddies, Matt Rossi, had a, a ZX, or a, I'm sorry, an 86 FZ 600. And he was like, dude, I bet you can't wheelie this thing. I'm like, well, let me ride it. I get on it, burp, burp, burp. I click the gears in the neighborhood. Oh. And I mean, it was on. Cause right. when, when I was a kid, I rode dirt bikes, you know? Right. So I didn't realize that there was a means of transportation that you could actually go from place to place to place yeah. and actually hoon. With power. Be a hooligan. <laughs> so, I knew from that point I had to get a I had to get a sport bike, right. and once I got a sport bike, I had to see what it can do: mm. top speed, wheelies, Everything. stoppies, burnouts, whatever it was. Um, it just its limits. it just kind of spun up, mm. and it and that's what it ends up being. You know, we're all the same. We all have some of the same DNA. Right. When we get on something and we go, oh man. I wonder if... We're the same. You cut us both, we're going to bleed yeah, the same exactly. DNA. Like, you're going to get on a scooter and make it wheelie. Exactly. You're going to get on a, on a, on a hoverboard and, we'll and it out. try and make it flip or spin or jump it off a curb. Right. It's the same thing, That's man. just what we do. It's in our blood. Yeah, I think when we're born with it and we just see a bike, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, that's me. Yeah. I'm done. Game over. Yep. Yeah. And it could be a bicycle, even. Anything. Pedal Anything wheelies. wheelies. Yeah. And Anything. if you can wheelie, you can wheelie. Anything, yeah. Basically. Another one. I know you have a bunch of bikes. You have the H2. You have the new Cowie Supermoto you got going. Of all of the bikes, which one is your favorite? Uh, you know what? That's a, besides the stunt bikes. Okay, because the stunt bikes are gonna right. obviously all, all play, bikes. play all favoritism. Bikes. Yeah. But I, I would have to say my my favorite bike to just hop on, throw a leg over, and go for a, a blip or whatever, obeying all the rules of the road, is probably gonna be like either my and this is a a very far <laughs> far variance from one end of the spectrum to the other. Either my ZX10. Or my Versus 1000. That's the Versus crazy. 1000 has knobby tires. It can go on the path or off the beaten path. Right. The ZX10 is like strapping yourself to a rocket. A, a rocket with a computer. A rocket with a lot of electronics. That's gone. Um, the H2's a very. Uh, it's a very. It's it's like a unicorn. Oh, definitely. And if you guys aren't aware, they're shooting a new Top Gun movie. Yeah. Um, and if you don't know, they, they chose to use my H2 say, yeah, for the movie. Right. Tom Cruise really wanted that bike, my, my own personal bike. So they've had that bike for almost two years now. I was supposed to get it back in June. Movie comes out in July. They're now releasing the movie in December. But my family at Kawasaki was nice enough to um, order me a brand new 2020 H2 Carbon. Yeah. To replace my H2. No, I mean, you can't be mad at that, right? And then I also get my H2 from the movie back, signed, sealed, and delivered, and it'll live in my living room, and yeah, it'll be forever. a piece of furniture, yeah, and that's it. For yeah. Sure. yeah, definitely. That'll never go anywhere. Yeah, so the H2 has got to be my favorite motorcycle, right? but I'm not going to hop on that and just go rip it oh, around yeah. because I'm so concerned about it. But oh, yeah. no one could ever deny 230 horsepower out of the box and supercharged. Right. I mean, it's a different, it's a different animal. Yeah, that's... That's like comparing a peanut butter sandwich to a steak. 
Exactly. <laughs> you love the peanut butter sandwich, oh, and, it's, yeah, and it's convenient. I'll eat both. Yeah, uh, but not? the steak, you don't get that oh, every night. Yeah, exactly. You could have peanut butter and jelly all the time. <laughs> 100%. How long have you had No Limit Motorsports? Uh, since 2005. So we started down Golden West about a mile and a half in a small 1,000-foot uh, unit. And it was generally for friends and family and my own bikes, to store my bikes and right. work on my own stuff. And then the demand grew, and then we moved to a 1,500, or a, a 2,000 square foot unit, sorry, next to that. And then the demand grew more, and then in 2009 we moved to, or 2008, I believe, we moved to a 4,000 square foot unit. And then in 2012, it was getting to the point where I had done so many upgrades to this building and I wanted to do more stuff to it, the building over there oh. that I was leasing. And I thought, you know what? I, sh I need to buy something. Right. I need something to call home. Your own. So we found this location. It's gated. I can house the RV. I don't have to store that anywhere. I can put all my stuff inside and I can have an area for a shop right. to work on customer stuff and take care of their needs. And work on your own. But it's got to be clean, right. right? It can't just be a shop with stuff all over the ground. And we don't take. the place. Yeah. So I'm really picky. If you guys don't know me out there, I'm a really picky guy. And uh, I, I like my stuff to be nice because my customers deserve their stuff to right. be in a nice they environment. They appreciate it. You appreciate it. You for know, sure. Exactly what it is. Definitely. Do uh, you have any goals that you have set for this year? Anything you want to reach? You know, I honestly, with, with everything that's going on and social distancing and quarantine and all these new words that we've had for 2020, um, there's been a lot of changes. And, and I used to have like these thoughts or ideas of like, oh yeah, let's do this and let's do that. Now they're trying to kind of clamp down on what we do. Right. Um, freedom isn't feeling so free anymore. 100%. You know, and we're, and now I'm just at the point where, you know, it, it makes you it makes you grateful for what you have mm. when someone tries to take it from you. Right. So we usually do 30 to 35 shows per year. This year we did 11 Supercross events. Right. Uh, leading in and we look like we're on track for like 40 shows maybe almost this year now with all this that's going on this has canceled so many events we're probably going to do 20 shows this right. year you don't think they're going to try and play catch up and try to cram pack events well for what i do i mean i know supercross is making up their events and mm -hmm. just before motocross starts but i mean for us really what's lost is kind of lost like all the stuff that we were doing in between may like a lot of the dealers want to do their open house when the season drops. Right. And now that we have events starting in June, that pushes, we still have all those events that are actually able to start back up now. Right. We're going to be into September, October, November on the East Coast. It's a no-go. Right. It's almost pointless because what benefit do the dealers have having an open house in September or October when it's, the season's almost over? Exactly. My goals, yeah. push through this and be ready for whatever we may have come up. If we have an extensive amount of events and they run into the late end of the season, so be it. Yeah, we exactly. got an air conditioned bus that we can hang out in and do our events and we can travel cross country, no problem with that. We can do what we need to do. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you have any thoughts of going to the Harley gang? Do you have any thoughts of getting a Harley later on down the road, maybe retire-wise? or? I can tell you right now, and it's been the same. People have been asking me this for the past four or five years mm -hmm. since the Harley thing is starting blow to up. blow up. I knew Harleys back in 2004 when I met Jason Pullen. up at the SAC Fest up in, in Sacramento. Yeah. And he competed in one of the stunt competitions uh, on a Dyna. And I saw amazing things happen oh, yeah. back then that he was doing in 2004 that a lot of the Harley guys seem to be able to get on and do now. Right. It's honestly, to me, that stuff that they're doing, the stuff that most guys are doing now is no more amazing than what Poland was doing in 04. 04, exactly. The difference for me is, and I have pa love and, 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 and passion for anyone that's about that life. Right. Poland is on another level. Yeah. I'll say that to anyone's face. No, I don't okay. care who you are, yeah. uh, any of the riders out there, hey, 
pull the that's that's your mark yeah. right there yeah. go yeah. base your your stunt riding on a harley yeah. off a of pullin and you're gonna go places and you're probably already going places because people get a lot of recognition oh, for definitely. for wheelie and harleys and yeah. doing doing stunts on harleys but to me, you got to give credit where credit is due. Sure. And for me, I don't, I don't have any interest in, in buying a Harley, wheeling a Harley, or doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. I don't even have any interest in wheeling Kawasaki cruisers. Right. You know, I mean, sport bikes open up a lot of other doors for me. Sure. Could I do wheelies on a on a Vulcan or a Vaquero? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Could I do burnouts on it? Yes. Yeah. Is it something that gets my blood? going and my adrenaline going no it doesn't do anything for me right respect hats off to all the guys that do it but it's not for me and, and there's a lot of guys out there buying expensive bikes and and trashing them oh, and yeah. <laughs> love and respect to them man yeah. that's they're doing stuff More that than I um, do. people aren't willing to do yeah definitely. and you know it's getting eyes on the stunt motorcycle scene so right. i'll take it yeah